These snakes are feisty and they bite and you're probably gonna see me get bit today. All right, today we're going to show you and talk to you how we make the Wildlife Command Center snake traps. Now, a little history on this trap. It started out about 10 years ago, I would just pick up a political yard sign. This is 24 inches by 18 inches. It's exactly the same size as a political yard sign. It's made out of plastic, the chloroplast type of plastic. And what I've done is instead of using the old political signs, I went to a printer and I had them print the snake traps up like this. And what we do is we cut them up and fold them and we make these excellent little snake traps out of them. So this little tutorial is how we cut the snake traps, how we fold them, how we ship them when we ship them out to customers and also what it's gonna look like when you receive the snake trap and what you need to do once you receive one of these. So first off, let's go and just clean this up a little bit. And we're gonna follow these lines right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them halfway through the, the coroplast. This is a little cutter that only cuts halfway through. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut the snake trap like so, see? a flap and then we're going to cut the snake trap like so another flap cut the snake trap like so all right those are our three half cuts now we're going to make our full cuts which is going to be from here to here and from here to here make sure you use a nice sharp leatherman or a razor and now this is gonna be a door. So I want to cut all the way through the door. Okay, see how that's gonna be a door? And then I only wanna cut halfway through here so that the door has a hinge. All right, so now the, the doors are gonna be here and here, like this. And that's what makes up your snake your snake trap, okay? Next things we need to do is we need to add a scent pad and we use these furniture pads for the scent pads. And this is what's gonna hold your strikum lure in place, which will draw the snakes into the trap. So you take this tab, it's got three lines on it, and you line up the middle tab and you put the scent pad right about there. Then you take this Strikem snake lure and you want to saturate the pad like this. When you order these online or through the mail, we already put this in place for you. So it will come with the pad and it will come with the lure already on it. Next, we're going to fashion a special release glue board this glue releases with spray-on canola oil. So any type of spray pam or canola oil or anything like that that's an organic oil uh, will work really well with releasing this glue. So when the snake gets captured on this, you can just spray it and you don't have to touch the snake or anything. And the snake can get off wherever you want to take the snake. Now, when you order a snake trap through the mail, it's gonna come like this. It'll be flat, okay? All you need to do is unpeel the wax paper, open up the doors, fold the trap over, and it will come with a one screw. And so you line the you line the mark up and then you put the screw through like this and you just screw it into the second piece of chloroplast. You can use a Leatherman or you can use a screw like this. And then that makes your 
snake trap. And so here's some of the features of it. One, it comes with telephone numbers that you can call in to get snake ID. If you text this number right here, this is our nationwide text for snake ID. All right, the snake can go in here and when he does, he'll get stuck there. The snake can go in this side or he can go in this side. You will clearly be able to see the snake from looking at a distance. And if the snake gets captured in there, you just make sure that it's not venomous. Just be very careful of that. All right, but that's how you assemble the snake traps and that's how the snake traps operate. Wildlife Command Center snake traps. Visit us at wildlifecommandcenter.com. And don't forget, smash that subscribe button and turn on the notifications because every time we upload a video like this or a how-to video, we want you to know it's uploaded. So yesterday we came out because of uh, snakes up in a column and couldn't find them or see them, but we set snake traps and voila. Looks like we caught two of them. A Western black rat snake. That was so big. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> these uh, these glue boards, they got a special release glue on it. We can just spray them down with some uh, Pam mm -hmm. or some canola oil and the snakes can come right off it. So we'll turn them loose in a farm and land somewhere. Oh, okay. Had to reach up and grab the second one. Wildlife Command Center yesterday, uh, we went out and did several snake services where the people were having problems with snakes in their home. And we captured all of the snakes that we were after yesterday. And so today we're gonna show you what you do and how you can get the snakes out of the trap and off of the glue boards. The key ingredient is gonna be some type of spray oil. Uh, this works good. This works good, this works the best. So for today's video, we're gonna use the canola oil. It's really good, it's non-toxic, and <clears throat> it doesn't hurt the snakes whatsoever. So the first thing is you wanna make sure that it's non-venomous, whatever the snake is. If it's venomous, it will hurt you. Now, the particular snake we caught in this trap is a black rat snake. And so the way you work it is there's a screw in each trap. You unscrew the screw. And then you allow the trap to flop open. Once the trap is open, then you can just take the glue board off like this. And then you can work the snake. Now you wanna make sure you don't spray the oil into the snake's face. So what we do is we always start like this, by covering his face, and we want to spray all of the, the glue board so that it will not be sticky anymore. And then we're gonna very gently start working the, the uh, oil to the edge of the snake. We'll just start massaging it a little bit. 
Massage a little bit of the oil. And that way the snake can release and start working himself free. Once we get the snakes off of here, we'll put the snake in a bucket and then we're going to allow him to clean up a little bit. We're gonna hydrate him, let him get some water, and then we're gonna find an appropriate place to release him at. And as you can see, he's starting to release himself. All right, he's off. So we're gonna put him in a bucket and we're gonna let him have some water and we're gonna clean him up a little bit more before we release him. Now the, the next snake we're gonna do, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. It's a much bigger snake and she really, really, uh, really, really got stuck. This snake, we had to set positive control to capture this snake. It was a much bigger snake. We gotta do a little bit more finagling on this one. Also, this snake is stuck in a much more difficult way. And so she's she's actually stuck on two different two different boards. this other glue board out. All right, like I said, a little bit more, a little trickier because she's attached two different glue boards. You don't want to spray right into their face. You want them to be able to breathe. And so you just kind of massage the, the oil in. Just her natural writhing will help get her off. I'm gonna work on this tail because I really want the tail finished before that head gets loose because she's not gonna be a very happy camper. So you just massage, don't rip it because snake skin is very del delicate. You never wanna rip the, the blue boards off. You always want to just be real delicate with it. The bigger the snake, the more difficult it is sometimes because they're just stronger and they can do things that smaller snakes can't as far as pulling and, and writhing. But just be patient with it. This will all release in, in due time and then you can get all the little bits and pieces off of her. We use three different kinds of traps. Uh, this trap we use as a last resort. We have other types of live traps that we use. And we also use a modified minnow trap uh, when we're trapping in the water. Just try not to pull. There we go, she got off. All right, so we're gonna clean her up and she'll be good to go. So after the, uh, this past week or so, uh, we've had several different uh, accounts where we've had to catch water snakes. And we catch them in koi ponds, we catch them in swimming pools, and we catch them in different 
backyard features. And so now we've got eight northern water snakes here. And we're gonna turn these guys loose somewhere where there are no koi ponds and far enough away from civilization that we don't have to worry about them uh, bothering with anybody. And this creek bed is pretty nice. It does go all the way down to a pretty big pond at the end of it, but there's plenty of frogs in here, plenty of fish and different things that these um, water snakes like to eat. These particular snakes are, they're not aggressive, but they are very feisty. And what I mean by that is, you always hear me say, Western black rat snakes don't bite, or they rarely bite, or they're docile and they're easy to work with. These snakes, completely different. These snakes are feisty and they bite, and you're probably gonna see me get bit today. Uh, a lot of people mistake these snakes for copperheads, but they're not copperheads. They are indeed northern water snakes, but you can see with the markings how people would mistake these for copperheads. So let's get one of them out and uh, we'll take a good look at it real quick. See if I can get it to stop a little bit. So see how it's flaring out like a copperhead? We can get it to stop for just a minute. I want you to be able to see that head really well. But see how they he's musking all over me. They're um, very feisty. I'm lucky this one's not biting because he really wants to. I think he just can't figure out exactly what to bite. All right, so let's let him go because I'm tired of getting mussed. Well, they blend in quick, don't they? Now this particular animal is about to go into shed and you can see its eyes are blue. And that's because it's, it's about to shed its skin. So it can't see me very well. So that's why it's missing. Female, definitely. There we go. Now they'll live their little snaky lives out in peace and tranquility. Big old fat girl.